Welcome back to the show, folks. This is the Upper Tier Podcast. I'm your host, Noel. This is the Morning Brew. Hope you're up on a Saturday. You got your Morning Brew, which I certainly got mine. Plenty to talk about this morning. Where do we start? Of course, the Man United ownership. Um, lots of parts on evolving in this. Um, you know, the ownership of PSG, the president of PSG, trying to get involved, being asked to get involved as a mediator. Uh, Qatar very unhappy feeling like they've been played in this is the club actually for sale was it ever for sale Jim Ratcliffe talking about legal action and, and, and you know backing off it and all this kind of thing the thing has kind of become a little bit farcical at this stage on one hand you've got the, the Glazers who kind of want to stay involved um, which means it's more of an investment and an ownership type thing would you really believe after three years they back out and give full control to Jim Ratcliffe on the Ineos plan? I wouldn't have thought so, um, because they can't be trusted. Um, but Qatar feeling like they've been played at this stage, I think they put in either five or six bids at this stage. There was supposed to be three bids with cut-off points and all. Every deadline has kind of slipped. But in the meantime, you have the club itself embroiled in the middle of this very difficult to lay down its plans you know get its targets in while this instability is still there so very very difficult for united to start going out there getting their targets for eric ten hag putting them in place for a real good pre-season for the new season and um, so it's a very difficult situation at the moment at united of course it's a huge buyout going to be the biggest in history apparently um but let's see how this evolves and um, but this needs to come to an end pretty soon um, the Glazers need to get off their backsides and, and sort it out and decide what the hell they want to do but uh, United fans absolutely going crazy at the moment you can feel the anxiety in the fan base as this drags on and on and on should have been well done at this stage um, but let's see what happens there um, Kane, um, an article came out the other day there about Kane looks like he's leaning towards Man United um, looking to get out of Spurs um, obviously dealing with Daniel Levy is going to be very very difficult it could be prolonged we've seen what happened with the City situation and if it is prolonged how long will it take and then will it actually happen will you know it if they get into contract talks with Daniel Levy will it take forever to get this over the line and if it's a last minute thing will it even happen or will you know it then I've been kind of led down the garden path on this one obviously Kane is a player that I would love because um, they need goals up front and stuff like that and he certainly would be the guy who provide those goals and could easily propel United into a full title race this season coming um, but I think this one is going to be a difficult one Levy very difficult to deal with Kane of course wanting out Tottenham's hand could be forced as well because Kane only has one year left on his contract so um, they'll want to get money in for him of course and stuff like that because I do believe if it rolls into next year he'll walk away next year on a free he needs to put trophies in the cabinet at this stage he can't be defined by goal scoring records and golden boots he's too good a player Liverpool at the moment making huge strides in the transfer window of course Alexis McAllister announced the other day first bit of business done 35 million was the buyout clause um, exceptional bit of business uh, to get done but now they're, they're agreed personal terms with Kevin Turam looks like that's going to happen in the next couple of days as well and also Kone looks like it's getting close as well so Liverpool out there uh, laying down a marker that they're going to be serious this season need to bring in a number of targets so we'll keep an eye on that and we'll, we'll jump on do shorts and all that kind of stuff once news breaks all the time um, Declan Rice on the back of that fantastic Europa League conference win um, David Sullivan has come out and said the boy is available he will be leaving this summer assuming the price is right um, the price can be anywhere I suppose and 85 to 90 all the way up to 110 million by the sounds of things um, Arsenal I believe had a uh, lodged a bid of 90 million and um, that hasn't been accepted yet and now Man City have got involved with a, with a bigger bid and I think once Man City gets involved it'll be interesting to see how this plays out um, we know the boy is kind of he's a London boy he wants to stay in London but the draw of Man City and Pep Guardiola and uh, Pep Guardiola and that sort of nearly guaranteed success if you like and um, might be a huge draw for him and stuff like that plus of course the money is going to be bigger and um, so let's see what happens with Declan Rice this this one tells me it's going to have many twists and turns over the next few weeks but it'll be interesting to see who lands Declan Rice absolutely outstanding player Mason Mount this is this is a uh, rolling on sounds like United are kind of at their 
their wits end with this one you know 55 to 70 million is kind of the the thinking around the price and stuff like that it's interesting to see what chelsea is doing at the moment it's like it's like last season what they did was they opened up the floodgates and they let everything in yeah come on we want to buy all these players bring them in didn't really have a plan around it and stuff like that just just scattergun approach of pockets of players coming in and stuff like that now they've done the absolute opposite they've started this contract at this uh, transfer window and they've opened up the doors and let it all flood back out so if you want to bid on a player everyone's for sale by the sounds of things and um, we've seen Kai Havertz uh, linked with places Kovacic has obviously gone from Man City by the sounds of things uh, Conor Gallagher has been linked with place as well we'll talk about that in a bit but it looks like everyone in Chelsea Mares to sell or sorry Mares is Man City sorry about that um, but yeah Mason Mount where is he going to end up are United going to push through on this a lot of United fans at the moment coming out and saying no 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 this is way too much for what we're getting here they're talking about him being an alternative in Eric Ten Hag's plans for a different kind of setup and formation stuff like that but are you really going to put 70 million quid's worth of transfer around your bench as an alternative um, I don't know whether that's the way to go for United Naby Keita we have to talk about of course got a move he's down there uh, he's after signing for Werder Bremen good to see him back in football and stuff like that but again that whole thing looms over Naby Keita in terms of injuries will he be able to play if he's now at a happier place he obviously wasn't very happy at Liverpool but if he's at a happier place will that help his fitness or will we see the injury prone Naby Keita again I think a lot of Liverpool fans are going to keep an eye on this uh, this season coming and see how he does at Werder Bremen see if what we thought is true that this guy just cannot stay fit but we shall see going to be interesting as we spoke about Chelsea there Christian Pulisic interest from AC Milan as well this is a boy that Chelsea for a number of number of transfer windows at this stage have been trying to get out the door or find a new home from being un unsuccessful in the past but is it time now for Christian Pulisic to move on and the move to AC Milan would be very very interesting likewise Conor Gallagher He's been uh, he's been touted out there. Villa are interested in him. Newcastle and West Ham. West Ham will be a great location for Conor Gallagher to go. And um, obviously with Declan Rice moving out, there's an opportunity to move in there and become a real big part of that midfield, and it could propel Conor Gallagher onto the next level and stuff like that. And especially coming in after the success of the Europe Europa League conference, and um, it'd be great to see the boy in there. We've seen how good he was at Crystal Palace. Could he replicate that form? at West Ham like what he did at Crystal Palace unfortunately he couldn't replicate at Chelsea but Chelsea this season just very hard to judge any of those players with the way that season went uh, Eddie Howe they've been talking about his budget for the transfer window has been declared at 75 million this to me just sounds like absolute nonsense that only 75 million is available for transfers this man is after getting Newcastle back into the top four. He's after getting them back into the Champions League. So there's going to be huge additional revenue coming in. Surely they got there's much more than 75 million in there. I'm sure they're going to move a few players out as well to try and up the quality within that squad for the coming season. But they're also going to need more players now with European football back on the back on the table. I don't believe for a minute the budget is 75 million. Even for a guy as skilled and as clever as Eddie Howe. You're asking an awful lot there from him for 75 million, which is literally these days a player, maybe, or a player on a free transfer or something like that. So, certainly not enough. Everton have offered a new contract, Seamus Coleman. Uh, great to hear that as well. We kind of thought he was kind of finished. Uh, horrific getting that injury towards the end and stuff like that. It was not the way for a man to bow out if that's what was going to happen. Certainly, he's uh, he bleeds blue, doesn't he? He bleeds that blue of Everton and stuff like that huge loyalty there from the boy as well and good to see the club showing loyalty to the lad as well whether he'll play a lot during the season or not or whether they're keeping him there as a you know a kind of an alternative as well that they can use him and bring him in as a sub but to keep him around the uh, the squad is really really vital as well so hats off to everton and shame's common there in a new contract um man united in their pursuit of goalkeepers looks like they're going to be ditching their pursuit of of uh, david Rea. Um, looks like just the money is just too much the agent doesn't seem to um, have had any success trying to convince the club to lower the fee from 40 million seems a lot of money for United to throw on a goalkeeper pending on what they decide to do with da David De Gea um, but it looks like now they might switch their thoughts to the boy Diogo Costa and maybe go for him but let's see what happens there but um, 
that David Reyes situation that needs to be sorted out very quickly that's way too much money to be asked for and the agent has asked the club to reduce the fee down but it doesn't look like they want to move on it so we'll see what happens again Chelsea more news here Kovacic looks like he's on the way to Man City terms have been agreed and um, so it's going to be interesting to see we spoke about it earlier in the season not earlier in the season but towards the latter end of the season when it was very clear that the 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 plan that Chelsea was going to have to put in place in terms of their players and in terms of this transfer window. Um, and Kovacic moving out, obviously he was one of the engines there in the midfield. Um, but they obviously look like they're going to probably lose a lot of players that they might necessarily wanted to have li- li- wanted to lose. Um, a lot of quality going out the door there. We know Kante is on the way to... Um, Saudi Arabia um, and a number of players obviously we mentioned Pulisic Kai Havertz has been linked with a move away um, what's going to happen to Raheem Sterling had a very very poor season are they going to be opened offers for him is he going to move on a um, number of defenders didn't perform as well are they going to move on seems to be a lot of moving parts at Chelsea at the moment are they trying to restructure their finances in terms of FFP um, is it going to take another year before this is all resolved Pochettino's in there is he going to stabilise it? Is this part of his plan? Is he looking at the players and he's going, don't fancy him, don't fancy him, they can go out the door. Is he giving Bowley a list of the squad, who he wants put out the door and who he wants in? We shall see what happens, but lots of work to be done at Chelsea this summer. Arsenal open to a Jorginho sale. Apparently a return to Italy might be on the cards. There's interest from Napoli and stuff like that. The boy only came in mid-season uh, as a strengthener. Um, but it looks like he might be on the way out the door and stuff like that. He has been kind of a bit part player, but obviously played a little bit more when Partey was injured. Um, and did pretty well for Arsenal at times, came in and did some did some good work there in the midfield. Um, but probably not the solution that Mikel Arteta wants, so we'll keep an eye on that one. West Ham are in for Harvey Barnes uh, off Leicester. Um, it's no secret that Leicester, Southampton and Leeds to an extent are all going to get raided in this transfer window unless they're looking at Tillemans is out of contract he's gone Madison looks like he's going to be on the move um, Harvey Barnes is going to be on the move number of players they saw on you is gone to Atletico um, so it's going to be interesting what Leicester are going to do in the championship looking at these players moving out but West Ham very interesting he's a cracking player Darren always talks about him he's a big fan of Harvey Barnes like myself um, and they're also looking as well at Paulinha from uh, Fulham who's had an outstanding season we've seen him earlier in the season uh, when my own team Liverpool played him he absolutely ran the show ran us ragged um, but had a really really good season with Fulham obviously they fell off towards the end the Mitrovic stuff didn't help and all but they were having an outstanding season under Marco Silva so Palina is one that has attracted the eye from a number of clubs but West Ham looked like they could be very interested clearly with Declan Rice probably moving out of the building it's going to be very, very interesting. United are also mulling over options for Mason Greenwood. Um, this is kind of the, the 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 problem in the room, really, isn't it? Because you're tied between whether he goes back into the club and starts playing, but all this stuff that's that's there, that's kind of people are kind of, you know, you got one set of fans that are saying, right, we heard the audio, we know what happened. Then you've got another set of fans going, he was found not guilty, there was no court case, all this kind of thing. Um, so it's hard to know you can let me know your thoughts on that I'm not too sure how I'd feel about it if it was at my own club um, my thinking is he'll probably go out on a long move I was talking to Darren the other night about it on the the, uh, the Champions League final preview and we were talking about how he probably needs to go out on, on loan Darren was thinking you know if he could get you 20 to 25 um, GA it might be worth keeping him um, but it'd be interesting to see how he's received in the public that first time he runs out onto the pitch and stuff like that um, is going to be very very interesting but he's an asset on Man United's books and they're very quickly this summer going to have to make a decision on the boy they can't have him just hanging around forever and a day he's either going to go back playing football or he ain't and they have to make a decision on it um, but either way it'll be a huge decision it's a tough decision and no matter what decision they make they're going to be wrong that's the way it is it's 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 sort of guilty by association type of thing isn't it really 
let us know your thoughts let us know on your own club as well what they're looking at what's happening out there anything happening in the market let us know your thoughts on the united ownership where you think it's going to go what's happening with this is this a ruse was it ever for sale were they just looking for investment qataris seem very disappointed and stuff like that and the way it has gone out and this intermediary for PSG, the ownership of PSG is a very, very interesting move in this chess game. Also hearing that PSG have made a move for for that boy at Napoli, uh, uh, Min J. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what way that's going to go. Um, do they really want them or is this guitar sending a warning shot to United? They're like, you know, if you've wasted our time over the last six months, we're going to make sure that your life is a hell in the market. And they certainly have the finances to do it. That's the conspiracy theory that's out there. Again, let us know your thoughts on it. Um, but one of United's top targets there at Napoli, it looks like PSG might be making a move for that boy as well. Again, let us know your thoughts. As always, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification, drop a like on the video, and let us know your thoughts in the comments.